Hello everyone, this is Bradwick. Today this is an updated version of uh, DNA helices animation I have done a long time ago. People frequently ask the, uh, this question uh, and uh, the old tutorial was so outdated that people really cannot uh, connect uh, parts together. So we're going to do this again. Let's start. So here we're in Blender. Let's model a uh, DNA helix first. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. I'm going to start with a curve linear, which is essentially just a resampled curve line. And we make that onto the Z axis. So we have a curve line here and uh, you can take a helical connections, which immediately split this line to three pieces. We are working with the DNA, so I only need two. And uh, then by controlling this radius, you can expand and contract the distance between these two. And we basically are going to utilize these features with a directional fold. And I'm going to put uh, an empty to drive it. And let's make the empty into an arrows. And let's take a bevel curve so that we can visualize these two strands uh, more clearly. And immediately plug in this radius, you can actually see the effect of this fall. And as I'm moving this fall, you can see they expand their radius based on the distance of this fall. Okay. And then because this fall is from 0 to 1, so we remap 0 to 1 and give it a kind of minimal distance so that they do not construct all the way. Okay. And we're going to use the same principle for this tilt function. And uh, let's take uh, another uh, remap root one. And I'm going to use a float range, which is adding uh, one value as a step size for every uh, vertices on this initial curve. So if you add that, then immediately you can see this effect. We have a kind of a helical, uh, helical structure. The downside of using step is that if you increase the count, then for every point you keep rotating the same value, then when they accumulate, you have an overall uh, larger rotation. If you want to make it consistent, you can type a value in the stop mode so that no matter how you increase the resolution, the overall uh, rotation will not be changed uh, because it's remapped with this start and stop. This time we are going to stay with the step mode, however, because we are going to use this step mode to drive the rotation to change that. And if I plug this directional fourth into the step value, and by animating this directional fourth, you can actually see the effect. We want to reverse the relationship. So, and we uh, reverse the root one and we keep a minimum at zero. So now we are unwinding that and expanding that at the same time using uh, the same empty. So here we basically have finished the general modeling of uh, our DNA helix. To make a scientifically correct uh, DNA double helix, uh, we need to deal with the major and the minor groove of a DNA structure compared to the regular helix. And uh, to do that is quite uh, straightforward. Uh, it's essentially just uh, shift one of the helix upwards to the other one. And uh, we can distinguish uh, different splines based on their spline index. So this is the first spline, this that is the second spline. And then zero is false, one is true. So we can directly use this into a selection and immediately you can actually see this effect with the offset. But uh, this setup will only work for this curve linear because even if you just switch that to X axis, then you immediately you see you need to change the X axis. So to make a universal solution in case you want to uh, curve your DNA to other things. Either you take a curve deformer uh, afterwards, or you can start with the curve. So for example, quadratic Bezier uh, initially. So in this case, I'm going to talk about a very general solution. Uh, 
how to offset it correctly. It's actually very simple. You basically just uh, capture an attribute. And uh, I'm not sure which attribute to actually use because we have three of them. We have the tangent, we have the normal, we have the cross product. So here I'm just going to take this curve tangent and apply that to offset. And then we get this effect being done. We can scale that to make the difference less um, obvious. And then you can switch that to the x-axis or y-axis. You can find it's always working. So this is a universal solution that applies to every kind of geometry. So now we get the correct result. And the next step is about the DNA uh, base pairing of this AT and GC. It's essentially just the instancing. So we take instance on point. And I'm going to join geometry for our instances. We take a cube, or you can construct a cube outside the geometry nodes, does not really matter. And uh, looking at our cube, I'm going to scale that on the xy plane so it becomes a long stick to the z axis. And I'm also going to take an origin offset. So it's sitting on the ground for us to easily rotate that. So now this stick is uh, oriented upwards uh, as it was on our uh, helix. I'm going to turn down the rotation for the moment so that we can actually see things a little bit better. Yeah, let's just turn out of this tilt. So basically what I want is that we need uh, our stick to look at the point on the opposite side. And to do that, it's a little bit index math because we need to extract the position. Uh, let's take a sample, sample index. And we are sampling the position value of the offset side. So how can we determine the index? We look at the index value and uh, you can turn on the attribute text in this overlay panel. Then you can see how this uh, index is being uh, laid down on our geometry. So we start with 0, 1, 2. After we finishing one spline, then we go to the other starting from 31, 32, and so on and so forth. This means that uh, we need an index to plus the total amount of points on my side. So we take a domain size, and we have the point count, and you plug that into the index. So now we get the points on the other side, we need to align points, uh, align rotation to point. Then you take this rotation to rotation. Then, boom, you have uh, one side doing correct work and the other side is completely chaos because they are actually looking at the world origin because they don't have a data from this value. If you use the clamp, then they will only look at uh, something else. But anyway, so this is because there is an index overflow after this 31 plus, this is 32. Then you find something like a 62 and there is no such kind of index exists throughout. So basically what we need to do is we need to flip the index back to zero. So we take a module. It does not matter which module you choose, just whichever one. And then we take the two times of the point count. And then uh, it will align correctly. We take the value position to scale our cube down. And now we can turn back our uh, helix. Then you can actually see they aligned correctly. At last, uh, we need to deal with the color coding of this DNA helix. So let's uh, get a lot more space for the color coding. There are many ways to do. In the older tutorial, I was using 
uh, the pick instance to pick uh, one out of four cubes I created outside geometry nodes. But this time we are going to only use one cube and one shader to accomplish all this kind of work. So I take a set material and let's add a material. It can be just uh, an emission shader, does not really matter. And we take this material and we are going to use a store named attribute to use the color in geometry nodes. Go to shader editor and I can take this attribute. Let's name just the attribute as a C, standing for color. And if you look at uh, the color, uh, you see it's black. It means there is no value. This is because uh, we didn't set a value. But even if we set that to color, the, the white color, still no value. This is because we are working with the instance yet. And you can use the instance mode. Then immediately you can actually change the color um, as you wish. To make it more accurate, like a base pairing of this AP and the GC, uh, we need to do some switching between these two colors. The first thing we need to deal with is, uh, is this row should be AT or should it be GC. And to do that, we need another pair index. And I already constructed for you so that we know this is zero, zero pair, this is one, one pair, this is two, two pair, three, three pair. And uh, to construct this index is actually very easy as well. It's again, just the capture the index of our initial curve. Okay. So once we know this index, we can actually use that as a random value. So let's take a boolean. And I need uh, this pair index into the ID so that we are having different values for each row. And you can see that, uh, uh, for example, the white part is AT pair, the black part is the, is the GC pair. And we plug that into a switch. And again, we are switching the color. So we can visualize that better. We have the red AT pair, blue GC pair, and so on and so forth. And the next, what we need to decide is one side should be A or the other side should be A. And to do that, we are again using this spline index because we can only use the spline index to distinguish which side are we on. So we take another switch and we use this spline index and we need to decide the other side as well. So for red, we are going to pair in with the purple or maybe green to make it more obvious and the blue pairing with the yellow. So now we have one side to be either A or G, and the other side will be either T or C. But then, what should we do next? We need to determine from pair to pair whether we need to flip their side. And you may find that these kind of concepts are very familiar because this is exactly what we did to determine whether this is an A T pair or this is a G C pair. So we take the random value of pair index and we are adding this value to this spline index to the switch. Then you can see there are some arrows going on. This is because we have a color overflow that's uh, once we decided it's true and the plus one then you flip back to the false. This is the same as what we do previously with the index, we need a module. And at this time we know this module is two because we only have two options. But uh, we still didn't solve the problem because one side must be red, blue, and the other side is always green, yellow. This is because we're using the same seed. So as soon as you change the seed, then everything will be flipped completely randomly. So now we finished this setup. This is the correct color coding, you can always check that. And you can always increase the value, you can always increase the counts. They will be 100% correct and procedural. And then you can add this uh, 
tilt back. Then you get this kind of animation if you drive this DNA double helix kind of stuff. I will finish the tutorial here. If you want to do an actual DNA duplication, I've already discussed uh, how to create a uh, double helix. You can just uh, duplicate that and uh, using another directional fold to make two strands closer. And uh, you can basically sample the index for either rotation or color pairing and so on. It's not really difficult, but it will take a uh, quite experiment because you need to basically duplicate a lot of nodes, so on and so forth. Uh, I think this is yet. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.